Hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about Donna Michelle St. Bernard's play Gas Girls. This is part of her 54-ology, uh, which is a series of plays dedicated to or set in each of the 54 countries in Africa. Um, her, her other play, Salome's Clothes, which I've done a video on before, is also part of this series. Um, and Gas Girls is inspired by Zimbabwe, um, because in Zimbabwe, apparently, there are uh, women who work as prostitutes, but rather than getting paid in money, they get paid in gasoline, which they then sell to vendors who sell it to whoever, the military or whoever it is. Um, and so that's what inspired this particular play. Um, so the play follows two characters, uh, Gigi and Lola, uh, who are basically in, they're living in a sort of border town in Zimbabwe um, and they're prostitutes uh, who again get paid in gasoline, which they then sell on. But they're also children. Um, Gigi is, is 19, Lola is 15. Um, Lola has just started into this world of prostitution and to a certain extent, Gigi is her sort of mentor, trying to help her figure out how to navigate this very dangerous world that they're, that they're inhabiting. Um, and so that's really one of the big tensions of the play is this this sort of disjunction between the girl's youth and the world in which they're they're living the the profession that they're in and the danger that they that they live with every day and so we really get that tension built up throughout the play uh, actually starting right from the first short scene um, which is just a performance there's no dialogue in the first scene uh, it's entitled adolescence and the the stage directions say music Gigi and Lola perform a patty cake that evolves into a step dance innocence to survival turning what you know into a tool so again we have this we start with this very overt signal of these of these girls' as youth playing patty cake, this child's game. Um, but then in the next scene, we have Gigi concluding a transa a sexual transaction with a trucker uh, who's called Mr. Man. They, Gigi calls him Mr. Man. Um, so we have that juxtaposition of like, the innocence of childhood games and the very mature streetwise um, bargaining over the price of, of having sex. So that's one of the central tensions. And it's also a tension between Gigi and Lola because Gigi is the more experienced of the two women, she's um, she's smarter than Lola. Lola is not especially bright, um, and so Gigi Gigi wants to look out for Lola, but at the same time, she recognizes that Lola's naivete. Her innocence is a significant drawback, a significant threat in this very dangerous world that they're living in. But Lola periodically, again, brings us back to this idea of innocence, that there's still something innocent, pure in these women, even, even in the circumstances that they've been forced into. So, for instance, one thing one thing that Lola periodically asks about is sometime. Um, 
And Gigi has this interesting sort of narrative about some time. So here she says, sometime we're going to go back to school. Sometime we're going to make nice dresses, all the ladies. You're going to make Kosova cake. We're going to have market stall. Husband going to love us. Kids be strong. Sometime they going to go to school too. You're going to be smart, getting your hair done. Going to come, come to the market in a car. Sometime you're going to ride the plane. Lola says, yeah, when sometime coming? Gigi says, never. Uh, they walk a little bit, and then Lola says, Gigi, when never coming? Gigi says, never mind, Lola. Nobody knows when sometime comes. One day it's just going to get here, and you got no time for thinking. You just got to go. Lola says, you going to come get me? Gigi says, for what? Lola says, if sometime come, uh, if sometimes comes, you're not going to leave me here, leave without me. And Gigi says, sure, Lola, I'll come get you. So... Again, we've got that friendship, that sort of mentoring relationship, that preparedness on Gigi's part to look out for Lola. We've also got that sort of youthful quality to this line of questioning. When is when is sometime going to come? This sort of idea that like sometime represents a concrete moment in the future. Uh, when these good things will happen. So we have those tensions in the play, and toward the end of the play, we're very starkly reminded that even with, even for Gigi, with all her sort of street smarts, her savoir faire, this is an incredibly dangerous world that they're inhabiting um, because Toward the end of the play, Mr. Man rapes Gigi and refuses to give her any gas. Um, and then when she attempts to basically trick him into giving her gas, he beats her. Um, and so, it, yeah, it is this terribly, terribly dangerous world um, in which these women have very little recourse um if they if they're victims of sexual violence physical violence uh etc etc so i mean it because it's a play with these two distinct tensions the this dichotomy it's a very um it's a very challenging play emotionally the other thing i want to talk about that i think is really um, important here is a critique of um, corruption, basically. A, a critique of the exploitation that goes on by a lot of African governments. Um, because Gigi and Lola sell their gas to a guy named Chicken, uh, who run the market stall. Um, he always wants to pay them less. They always want him to pay more, you know, normal market kind of stuff. Um, but at one point, Chicken says, same can cost me half that on the open market. Gigi says, really? Open market good to you? Why are you wasting time with me? Chicken says, open market playing hard to get right now. Gigi says, you mean she run away? No gas, no soap, no milk. Nobody's seen open market in a long time. You know something we don't? Chicken says, oh, I know where to find she. Gigi says, really? Chicken says, yes, man. I just have to climb up the president leg and go look in him pocket. Um, and then there's a bit about like paying off officials and things like this. So again, there's this critique of corruption here, this, this critique of a system in which wealth flows upwards and poverty flows downwards, um, which is, of course, increasingly <laughs> the economic system across the world under neoliberalism, um, but particularly in a lot of global south nations, uh, the exploitation and corruption is more overt and open, whereas in the global north, um, 
including countries like Canada, where uh, St. Bernard lives, it, the corruption it is less overt. Um, things tend to be more sort of plastered over with legal niceties and things like this. But anyway, that's a digression. Um, again, gas girls. We have very interesting tensions and, and a clear sort of social message here um, existing and developed through this tension between innocence and savviness 